Welcome friends, welcome to another Pizza of the Week, and this week we are making Detroit deep dish pizza, a Motor City classic. So first into this bowl is Durham semolina. Uh, that is a grittier kind of, of flour, uh, adds a really nice texture and, uh, and a different flavor to the pizza dough. Next in is some yeast and sugar and water. And this water is about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So we put this in and I'm going to give this a stir to hydrate the flour, uh, mix in the yeast, and then we're going to let this sit for five or ten minutes and let that yeast bloom, uh, let it prove, let it come to life. We're looking for some foam on the top just to make sure that everything is going the way it's supposed to. <clears throat> now, if you are a pizza purist, um, if you've been upset with the other pizzas that I'm making, hold on to your hat because this one is going to blow you away. We're going to cook it in these parts bins. These are Blue Steel Detroit City pizza pans. Uh, they started out as parts bins in the auto industry. We're going to build these pizzas upside down. So the pepperoni goes on first, then the cheese, then the sauce. Um, in some places, they don't put the sauce on until after it comes out of the oven. This is an amazing interpretation of a pizza. Okay, so we've got foaming action, the yeast is good. Now, if you know that your yeast is good, you don't need to do this step. It's not strictly necessary. You could have just added everything all at once. Next in is bread flour, and this is just plain bread flour, not anything special, no pizza flour, no double zero. Uh, this is just regular bread flour. So we put that in and some salt in as well. And I'm just gonna give this a bit of a stir with spatula just to start moistening it up. Okay, we get it to this point where it's this ragged looking ball of dough. I'm gonna put a cover on it and I'm gonna leave it for 15 minutes. Okay, the time is up. Now, the purpose of letting this rest is really just to make sure that the flour is fully hydrated, which is going to help in the kneading process. Uh, so I'm gonna put this onto a stand mixer and we're going to knead it on medium for seven to eight minutes. Okay, the dough looks great. Now, I'm gonna pull it out of the mixer. Here's the deal. Just like our 72 hour uh, pizza dough that we make for the other pizzas, <clears throat> this would be great if you put it in a bowl, covered it, and stuck it in the fridge for 12 to 24 hours. Uh, you would really build a lot of flavor that way. And you'd also get a better texture, but I don't have that luxury today. I'm cooking this pizza tonight. So it's gonna have to do with a couple of hours on the countertop. So I'm going to pull this out of the bowl. I'm going to break it roughly into two pieces. And then I'm gonna put each of those pieces in an oiled bowl, cover it and leave it on the counter for three or four hours. Now this dough is incredibly sticky, so make sure you turn it to coat it fully with the oil in the bowl. Okay, it's all coming together. The sauce is pretty much done, so I'm just gonna keep this at a low simmer just to keep it warm. <clears throat> Got a really good rise from the dough. Now we move on to shaping it into the pans. Now these, as I said, are blue steel pans um, made in Detroit. They are the kind of standard Detroit deep dish pizza tin. And just like a cast iron pan, they have been seasoned to try to make them no stick. And the more you use them, the more no stick they will become. Um, these haven't been used very often. They still might stick a little bit. But every time you make a pizza with these, you're going to use quite a bit of oil. Um, generously coat them with oil, and you want a neutral flavored oil. You don't want to use olive oil. Uh, today I'm using canola, but you could use grape seed. You could use probably avocado, something with a high smoke point um, that doesn't add any flavor. 
And so you just want to rub the oil into the pan. Get it coated everywhere. And if you think you've used too much oil, you've probably used the right amount. Okay, now leave the oil on your hands. In fact, get both of your hands oiled up because this is a very sticky dough. Um, it will stick to everything. And in the last part of this, I didn't use any flour on the bench and it did stick to the bench. You don't want to use any flour then. Um, let it stick to the bench. So we're going to pull this out and in the process of pulling it out, it will deflate. That's fine. Um, it's expected. We create kind of a triangle, uh, rectangle. I guess math wasn't my big thing. So we get, a, we get a rectangle and we put it into the pan. And then you just try to spread it out a little bit and it's going to contract back on you. That's fine. As soon as it starts to contract back on you, stop, move on to the next one. And so we'll pull this one out and we'll do exactly the same thing. Kind of pull it into a rectangle, put it in the pan, and then spread it out a little bit. Now, as soon as it pulls back, stop spreading, and we're going to let this sit for about five minutes. I'll put some covers on it so that it doesn't dry out, and then we'll come back and we'll finish the shaping. Now, we'll uncover them, and we'll just continue pressing them out to fill the pan. Now this might take you two or three times, just let it rest, cover it up, come back to it. Uh, don't be impatient with it. Don't try to force it. Um, as soon as it starts to pull back, just let it go, let it relax. I'm gonna move over to this one, and we just do the same thing. Just use the tips of your fingers and push it out. And you're gonna think, oh, there's too much oil, and that's why it's springing back, because it's you know slick and it's oily. Partially that is true, but mostly it's the gluten in the dough. So just pull it out. And now if this takes two or three times, it'll take you two or three times. Don't worry about it. Just recover it and come back to it. Now once you've got it spread out, cover it up, and we'll let it rise for about an hour, hour and a half. Okay, I think we are ready. Now, I said this before. These are upside down pizzas, which means the pepperoni goes on first and the sauce goes on last. So I'm going to make the first one as the classic traditional. Pepperoni goes on first, and this is not artisanal pepperoni. This is not the meat hook. Um, this is industrial strength pepperoni, and you just place it on here until you cover the entire piece of dough. Of course, you know, you want the pepperoni to be good quality, but you know, you're not buying something really fancy for this pizza. Looks good. I think I got more on one end than the other, so let's, uh, let's even it out a little bit. Great. Next on is the cheese. And again, this isn't anything too crazy. This is Wisconsin brick, and it's shredded. And you want to get it right to the edge of the pan. You want it to touch the edge of the pan. And you want to put a lot of cheese on here. You want the cheese to sort of melt right up against the side of the pan and create this sort of crispy wonderfulness. Absolutely wonderful. Now, I've got about 320 grams of cheese per pizza, and that's from talking to the guys at Buddy's, a little bit of information that I could glean from online. Um, it seems like a lot of cheese. It is a lot of cheese, but it is so good. So make sure you get it touching the side of the pan. That's perfect. Now the second pie is based on one that they serve at Buddy's called the Detroiter. And so it's a little bit different. The cheese goes on first and then we put on the pepperoni. Really lay them on thick. And last on is the sauce. And I can hear some of you out there screaming, how are you going to spread the sauce on top of the pizza now? You don't. Um, you don't. The crazy thing is you just put two racing stripes of sauce across the top of the pizza. You lay it on thick and it goes right to the end. Now, I'm putting it on before it goes into the oven. Uh, a lot of places in Detroit put it on after. Um, it comes out of the oven. So you can do it either way. And I just wanna make sure I've got enough sauce for both. And then you just toss these in the oven and let them cook like any other pizza. I, I uh, thought that might have been a little more graceful. 
Okay, so um, I said earlier that the pans need to be seasoned. These come pre-seasoned, but apparently not as seasoned, seasoned enough. As seasoned enough. So eventually they will become non-stick, but at this point they are apparently still a little bit sticky. They're full stick. It is like full. They're full stick. Yep. Hot season in here too. Woo. I don't know. It's like 35 degrees Celsius in here, which is absolutely crazy. So it's a bit messy here, but this end looks really great. Um, like anything, when you do it the first time, it's, it's not, like the first pancake. The first one. It's, it's not always. Gonna be, it's not going to be perfect. And don't expect perfection. I know a lot of people get all weirded out. They don't make it perfect the first time, and then they throw their arms up in frustration and they never try it again. Get back on the horse, make another pizza. Well, you know, the biggest test? Is what it tastes like. What it tastes like. So. Um, I'm gonna say that's probably still way too hot for me. This one is. Like, I'm gonna burn my mouth. The Detroiter. Okay, so it's got the sauce on top, and it's got the sauce and the pepperonis on top, on of, top the of the cheese. On top of the cheese, yes. Um, whereas that one is more traditional with the pepperoni under the cheese. I might cut that a little smaller. Is that okay? What are you talking about? That's not how they do it at Buddy's. <laughs> I just need a little piece <laughs> to eat right now. Okay. Um, it's going to be hot. So the thing I like about this style of pizza is it's a thick bread. It's almost like a focaccia. And it's on the underside, it's like a fried bread. Yeah, and, and the I, edges, you get that fabulous that crusty cheese. Crusty cheese is just amazing. It's got that wonderful, it tastes great. Other than I couldn't get it out of the pan because the pan's not seasoned properly. This tastes amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the dough's got the right consistency. The crunchy cheese bits around the outside. Yes, yes, the, oh, oops, I'm, 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 uh, Leaking sauce onto your other one. How are we going to compare now? It's been contaminated. I like that. I like that a lot. Now, if you are a pizza purist and you're saying that's not pizza, that's fine. Call it something else. I don't really care. Just call it the Detroiter. Because um, it's amazing. That is truly an American pizza. So this one in theory should taste the same. It'll taste exactly the same. It'll taste exactly the same. And I'm not going to get into cutting it right now because... it's. <laughs> It's a bit of a disaster. It'll be easier to cut when it's cold. So, give this pizza style a try. I will put links below to where you can get these pans. Um, the recipe will be below. Thanks for stopping by. Give it a try. Hope to see you again soon.